Create is one of Minecraft's most useful mods ever made. Almost every single thing you're looking at right now has some use or purpose, but uh, did you know that you could climb the rope of a rope pulley? Like, yeah, I understand that it's technically a use, but I, I feel like it wouldn't be useful for long and... Why wouldn't you just build an elevator? The reason blaze burners burn blue when they're superheated is actually because they're a reference to Calcifer from Howl's Moving Castle, who also burns blue when superheated. Except, he has to eat a heart to burn blue, so, uh, hmm. Maybe, maybe, best stay away from that. Something that was actually shown off in the trailer for Create, a basin that is turned upside down on a contraption will spit its item out, which... Truly, why would you do that? Deployers being able to do anything a right click can do do have the ability to use a wrench to wrench create objects. And this is a double weird thing because you actually can't put a wrench directly inside of a deployer. If you want automated wrenching, you actually have to hopper it into the deployer because there's no way to actually right click it with one. Did you know that blaze burners actually give off a redstone comparator signal? Uh, nothing when they're smoldering, a level of 2 when they're heated, and a level of 3 when they're superheated. Ultimately, this is pretty pointless because it doesn't actually increase with how much time they have left in them, so you get no other information except for the fact that it's currently on. Much like a slime block, the slimy side of a sticker is actually bouncy. But if you fall from a great height, unlike a slime block, you will actually still take fall damage when bouncing on the sticky side. Waxed weathered copper shingle stairs is the longest item name in create. An upwards facing encased fan blowing at at least 30 RPM can actually lock a mob's pathfinding. No matter what, this hovering chicken cannot get to me. Now you might be thinking how useful that sounds for Sorry about the misinformation, it's 31 RPM, that is my bad. But you might be thinking, okay, villagers, so useful, right? No, villagers need pathfinding to be able to actually target their positions, so all this is is just a way to lock a mob down. Another thing that kind of sounds like it should be more useful than it is, is infinitely slow RPM. You see, there's no bottom limit on how slow something can go, and it's hard to see, but if you really get close up to it, you can see this cog is actually moving. Now, you can actually run machines off of this. If I were to put an iron ingot underneath of this press, it will technically begin to press, but, uh, I don't really think it's quite worth it. Now, the only possible way this could be useful is the fact that fans actually have to blow a minimum of three blocks. Which, by the way, it does look kind of funny to have basically a stationary gear powering a fan moving that fast. But, honestly, is the difference between zero SU and two SU that much? Because even a fan going at one RPM still only takes two SU. If you were to do that off of a large water wheel, you could still run 256 fans and really what's the difference between infinite fans and 256 fans? If you are obsessed with infinite fans, may I direct you to the theoretical limit for the amount of fans that can affect one item stack at once. For to make this work, you would have to get the item stack perfectly in the center connection between between these four blocks and have each of the fan exerting the same amount of force so the item would kind of hover in the center. This is, of course, completely impossible to do without mechanisms that would honestly take longer than just using 10 fans, which is the actual practical limit. And speaking of a practical limit, this list took me over a week to compile and this set and script many hours, so it would be really helpful to me and my sanity if you could subscribe to the channel and check out some of my other stuff. In lieu of my faked sanity, let's check out some stuff you can actually fake with the create mod starting with crushing wheels these are just crushing wheels on mechanical bearings honestly i was actually surprised that these don't work i i surely thought they would but uh, nope just fake old crushing wheels they look pretty convincing though in a similar vein you can actually fake a blaze burner by feeding it attaching it to a contraption and then making sure that contraption can't place it the blaze burner will appear to burn pretty much indefinitely and, uh, it doesn't do anything. Now, don't tell anyone, okay? But this is actually a useful fact in disguise because it pauses the burn timer of the blaze burner, uh, so you could extend your blaze cakes, but don't tell anyone, okay? It's a secret. If you want to identify your fake blaze burners, there's actually a few tricks you can use. For instance, a real blaze burner will actually duck downwards underneath of a basin or fluid tank and emit spiral flames. It'll also not follow the player anymore. Similarly, a ducking blaze burner will close its eyes when it passes a certain threshold of burn time and open them back up when it's getting low. Which, um, 
doesn't actually do anything because mechanical alarms, you know, power these guys automatically anyways. If you're a little tired of your blaze burners looking at you too much, might I suggest putting some goggles on them? It actually doesn't do anything, but it's kind of cute. You can also put goggles on these guys to give them kind of a funny nose face. If you want a little bit of pride in your Minecraft world, have a mechanical arm targeted jukebox, power it, and you'll get a nice rainbow dance. This next fact was supposed to be that you could have two minecarts on a single minecart contraption, which just kind of makes them freak out, but uh, I didn't understand it made them freak out to this degree. Interestingly enough, it, it, you can still stand on the actual minecart contraption, like the hitbox is here. I don't know what is doing this. Uh, let me know in the comments if you've ever seen this before. For now, I'm gonna stop the- Oh. Oh. Okay. It's there forever. You probably do know this because I've told absolutely everybody, but blaze burners will actually eat eggs because, you know, they're calcifer from Howl's Moving Castle. If you want a super useless fact with it, in the fabric version of Create, the eggs can actually still spawn chickens. Although I and some of my community members did use that useless fact to create the world's smallest possible self-sufficient level 9 steam engine, which this one actually is. It's not running right now because it requires 1.5 thousand chickens to be right here and slows your game down to a crawl. There is a random setting on brass tunnels. Why is there a random setting on brass tunnels? What does this do? Minecart couplings. Just, just minecart couplings. As many of you may know, you can right click a water wheel with planks to change its color. But did you know that a deployer could technically automate that for you if you set up a little system? So you could have a rainbow water wheel alongside your rainbow uh, jukebox dance and uh, mechanical arm. You can encase shoots, but only with industrial iron, which just kind of makes bulkier looking shoots and actually emulates the diagonal shoot, but you can't encase it with anything else. So it still just looks like a shoot. Another useless thing you can do with them is waterlog them. Which, like, I understand is a decorative thing, but it doesn't actually cause the particles that come out of them to wash, even if you did have a fan down there. So, it's just a wet shoot. While I was researching the technology behind the chicken core, which you should check that video out, uh, I found out there's actually code for extinguishing a blaze burner with a splash water potion. Funny enough, this doesn't work. So, not only is extinguishing a blaze with a splash potion totally useless, it's also bugged! Honey, chocolate, and water don't really know what to do with themselves when flowing around each other, and each just kinds of treat each other like a solid block. The wand of symmetry is really something I've never seen anyone use, but interestingly enough, if you do use it, it can copy the position of a sign, but not the text of a sign. Everyone knows that weighted ejectors are one of the most fun ways to move items around, and they're super accurate. I mean, look at that. They're even pretty accurate when it comes to mobs hitting their target almost all the time, except for one. Over short distances, the chicken is launched a little bit off course, but if you were to go even just a little bit longer, you'll notice that a weighted ejector becomes inaccurate with chickens over long distances. In a very technical sense, the create mod scaffolding is better than vanilla scaffolding because it can bridge two blocks further and is not affected by gravity at all, which actually might make it worse. If you're a complete lunatic, you can actually use clockwork bearings for your farms. Uh, it seems like I forgot to glue my farm to get... Wait. Oh no, it turned the vault into the other hand of the clock and it now doesn't count as an inventory, so there you go. That also just breaks everything. I didn't know that. <laughs> Pretty sure that was glued to the contraption, by the way. So, uh, yeah, the more you know. As funny as it is to theorize, you actually cannot have a deployer power itself with a hand crank. Unfortunately, you would need three deployers running at two times speed, which requires way more than 256 SU. Using a radial chassis and a hatred for all things nice and good in this world, you can create very cursed-looking floating windmill sails because they will actually connect to the glued side of a chassis. So, that's pretty horrible. Now, the potato cannon is pretty useless in its own right, but did you know that it shoots more than potatoes? In fact, it shoots even more than just vegetables, like its tooltip claims. It'll shoot fruits, too. Golden carrots do the most amount of damage in a potato cannon, with beetroot doing the absolute least. Golden apples or enchanted golden apples will actually give their potion effects to their victims instead of dealing any damage, but they make the cooldown last very long. Baked potatoes will set your enemies on fire, and poisonous potatoes will poison them. Perhaps most importantly, pie will splat on the enemy. It doesn't really work that well on the dummy, but you can see how it sticks to them and runs down them, all of those old cartoons. It also comes with a special sound.
Gross. Unfortunately, if you want to launch like an item does off of a belt, you'll be sad to know it doesn't work like that. However, the diagonal belt launches you a little bit further, which is apparently the distance of 2.3 to 2.4 blocks. I don't know why Triaban knows that, but that's where I got that info from. Though you can experience the joys of exercising in Create, with 102 RPM being the ideal speed for a walking treadmill, and 134 RPM the ideal speed for a running treadmill. Refined Radiance and Shadow still are still accessible through console commands, and I just hope they bring them back one day, because their building blocks are really pretty. Drills simply do not work when they are centered on a contraption and spinning upside down. Drills absolutely work while upside down, even on a spinning contraption, I can show you like so. Just gotta glue these guys together and you'll see the truth of things. Boom. Working just fine. Not you. Never you. Similarly, a upwards facing drill centered on a contraption has some inconsistencies in when it begins breaking a block, and you can totally screw it up by breaking the block before it. Much like stickers, honey and chocolate do not protect you from fall damage. Arguably, though, they push you faster than a water stream does, which, well, just really doesn't make any sense at all. A campfire, while on a contraption, loses its animation, light, and damage, but still emits smoke into the air. Despite having the power to melt cobblestone into lava, a superheated blaze burner cannot deal damage to the player. Uh, presumably, this is actually create lore, in that blazes are considered housed and employed by the player when placed in a blaze burner, so they wouldn't hurt you even if they could. And for final fact number 50, you can now tell your friends you know 49 useless facts about create. I just want to use this time to say thank you so much to the members of this channel. They are helping this channel and me become closer and closer to becoming a full-time content creator. So if that's something you'd be interested in, subscribe and become a member.